so a data set consisting of observations on a single attribute is a univariate data, univariate data set. A univariate data set is either categorical, or sometimes we write it as qualitative, if the individual observations are categorical responses. And a univariate data set is numerical, or sometimes we call it quantitative, if each observation is a number. So as we start to break down our variables, all right, we have to keep track of how many variables are floating in our problem. Until we get to chapter 12, it will always be one variable. And this one variable will either be categorical or numerical. And some folks refer to it as qualitative or, quantita or, or quantitative. Either one works for me, but I usually go with categorical or numerical. And as we go through these, I think they'll start to make sense as to which is which. So classify each of the following attributes as either categorical or numerical. Make and model of a car purchased by a customer. So if we think about this, if I were to ask you, what is the make and model of your car? Is your response to me gonna be categorical or is it going to be a number? And I'll tell you, for me personally, it's a Toyota Corolla. And if you hear that, that is not a number, right? I didn't say, hey, what's the make and model of my car? Seven. This is just make and model of my car, Toyota Corolla. So this is a categorical variable. And if I went around the classroom and asked each student, hey, what was the make and model of your car? You can imagine they would give me different word answers, right? different phrases, Honda Accord, Nissan Sentra, a Prius or whatever it is. We could keep track of the frequencies of each of those, but it's categorical. That's the type of variable that's in play when we're talking about the make and model of a car. In terms of the state of birth, I, I could also do this. I could go around the classroom and ask each of you, hey, which state were you born in? And are you going to give me a categorical response or a number? And let's talk about what it isn't. Right? This is not numerical. I would not ask you, which state were you born in? Two. That's not going to be an answer. You're gonna tell me California or Michigan or I wasn't born in the United States. So we've got, again, a categorical variable. Okay. In terms of the price of a pair of shoes, if I ask you, hey, what was the price of your last pair of shoes? Are you gonna give me a categorical response or a number? You're going to give me a number, so this is a numerical variable. And this is the first breakdown we have of our variables. You figure out what the variable of your problem is and you start by qualifying it. Hey, this is categorical, this is numerical. We do certain things in stats with categorical variables. All right, we often look at proportions and we do different things when we look at numerical variables. We usually look at averages. So depending on what type of variable you have, you're either gonna be looking at a proportion or an average, okay? All right, now let me scoot the page up. If you are looking at a numerical variable, we're gonna further break that down. So some numerical variables are called discrete, some numerical variables are called continuous. I'm gonna give you the book definition in terms of what discrete versus continuous means, and then we're gonna go through and we're gonna talk about, I think, an easier way of, of thinking about these. So numerical data or quantitative data are discrete if the possible values are isolated points on the number line, okay? And I'll talk about this IE in a little bit, but if the possible values are isolated points on the number line, we got discrete data. Numerical data is continuous if the set of all possible values forms an entire interval on the number line. And that's all fine and good, but I think the IEs are gonna make this more manageable. So we will call numerical data discrete if we can count the variable, okay? So if it's a variable that you would count, we're gonna call that discrete. If we're gonna take numerical data and say it's continuous if you're gonna measure the data, okay? So numerical data is discrete if we count it, numerical data is continuous if we measure it. So let's keep those two ideas in mind and we're gonna go through this and we're gonna say, hey, first of all, do I have categorical or numerical data, qualitative or quantitative? And then for each time I hit quantitative or numerical, I'm gonna go discrete or continuous. So I'm gonna do the first um, up through F with you. 
and then I want you to pause and try and do the rest on your own and then come back to the video and see what the answers are. All right, so let's do this. Classify each of these as qualitative or quantitative. So I'm gonna put a little note here. This is categorical or numerical. And again, either vocab term is okay. I usually stick with categorical or numerical. I put these in the directions here just to remind you that you have a couple of options. So let's go through, I'm gonna do A through F. So where I go on vacation. Well, I would answer that with a word. So I'm gonna say this is categorical. All right, the distance from your home to the nearest grocery store. I would answer that with a number. So this is numerical. Okay, the number of classes you take per school year, I can see it right there, number. So this is numerical. Tuition for my classes, it's gonna be a dollar amount. So that's gonna also be numerical. The type of calculator you use, so graphing, scientific, TI-83, Casio, this is going to be categorical. All right. And in terms of movie ratings, I tend to age myself, so when I hear movie ratings, I think of G, PG, PG-13. Um, so if I'm going that way, I'm going to say that's categorical. Uh, as I've taught longer and longer, I, I feel students usually hear movie ratings and they think of Rotten Tomatoes as a percent, like 80% rotten, 90% rotten. So I'm gonna put, if, if you're going G, PG, PG 13, like that, it's categorical. If you're gonna look at it through Rotten Tomatoes, which is fine, I just wanna talk about both, that would be numerical, okay? So I followed the first direction. I have classified each of the following as either categorical or numerical. All right, for those that are quantitative, for those that are numerical, we have to go discrete continuous. So let's go through and I see I have one, two, three, I have four numerical variables here. So I need to qualify those. All right, so the distance from your home to the nearest grocery store. Let's think about distance. That's my variable here. Now distance, do I count distance or do I measure distance? So we count, just kidding, we measure distance. So this is gonna be numerical continuous. Okay. And to touch on this, when it says possible values form an entire interval on the number line, if you think about the distance from a house to a grocery store, it could be 1.2 miles, 1.3 miles, 1.4 miles, 1.47896 miles. It can be any distance, all right? So since we measure distance, we're gonna call it numerical continuous. But here starts our first look at the gray area. Distance, it's always numerical continuous, but we tend to report it discreetly. Okay, so I'm gonna put a little arrow here and say it's usually reported discreetly. And what I mean by this is we tend to round. In the real world, I wouldn't say, hey, I'm 1.4598 miles from the, from the nearest grocery store. I'd just say I'm 1.5 miles or one and a half miles. I'd round it. So we tend to just cut things off and report them discreetly, even though theoretically they are numerical continuous. And um, if you guys are using that Waze app, Waze does the same thing, right? It'll tell you your destination is 9.2 miles away. Well, it might not exactly be 9.2, it might be 9.25781, but Waze is gonna report it discreetly. All right, the number of classes you take per school year, do I count that variable or do I measure that variable? I'm definitely gonna count it. I'm taking one class or two classes or three classes something like that. So this is an example of numerical discrete. Okay. In terms of tuition, do I, it's, it's gonna be money, do I count my money or do I measure my money? I count my money. Most of us count our money making this numerical discrete. The only time I've ever seen anyone measure their money was in that TV show, um, what was it called, Breaking Bad, where Walter White had so much money he had to just start weighing it. Um, perhaps to you, if you get to a point in your life where you could weigh it. In his 
case, if he was talking about the, the amount of money he made from meth that year, his would be numerical continuous because he's weighing his money. Again, I, I'm never gonna hit that point in my life, so I'm always gonna have money being numerical discrete. Okay, um, the last numerical one we have is this Rotten Tomatoes. Now, Rotten Tomatoes comes from being a fraction, right? They'll say something like you had, I don't know, um, 85 reviews and 78 of them were positive and they'll turn that into a percentage. So give me a moment. Let's take 78. Let me clear this out. 78 and divide it by 50 and I'm at like one point. Nope, that's not true. 78 divided by 85 there. Um, about 92%. So I want to point this out. Right On Rotten Tomatoes you would see 92%. And you can see this, this decimal here, it keeps on going. It can be any number. So technically, we're back again to, this would be numerical continuous. Anytime you've got fractions, you're looking at continuous. But it's reported discreetly. All right, because Rotten Tomatoes isn't gonna say it's 91.76470588. It's just gonna round it to 92% and call it a day. And when you round it, when you offer space between those options, and when I say space, I mean, you could be 91% rotten, 92% rotten, 93% rotten. There is space between these options, right? There's a whole percentage that's a space in between those options. There's a whole percentage that is a space in between those options, and if I, look back to this original definition of discrete, you're discrete when you have isolated points on the number line, all right? But when you have these decimals, you can be an entire interval on the number line. There's no stopping the options there. All right, so with that, take a moment, pause the video, and see if you can figure out the next five, um, five questions. Okay, I'm gonna move this up. And we're going to start to take a look. So my political party preference, that would be categorical. You would tell me something like, I am a Republican, a Democrat, an independent, part of the Green Party. Um, for weight of sumo wrestlers, that is a numerical variable. Weight is numerical. All right, the amount of money I won playing poker, that would be a number. So I will say that is a numerical variable. The number of correct answers on a quiz, that is a numerical variable. And people's attitude towards the government, um, that would be a category, like I like it, I hate it, I love it, I don't care. So this would be categorical. And going through here, I have to then break down numerical a little bit further. So for weight, I measure my weight, so that would be numerical continuous. All right. I, again, I count my money. As I mentioned, Walter White weighs his money, but if I'm playing poker, I'm not making that much money. I'm not very good at it. I count my money, so that would be numerical discrete. Um, the number of correct answers I got on a quiz, I would count that, so that would also be numerical discrete, okay? Um, and in terms of weight, I just wanna mention again the gray area that's going to pop up. And I say gray area because um, if we were gonna talk about a person's weight, Usually you say something like, I weigh 137 pounds, right? Or 138 pounds or whatever you happen to weigh. And just so we're clear, this is not my weight. I'm not giving that to you on day one. Um, but I really could weigh 137.45782 whatever pounds. So I could weigh this, but we t that's why weight is continuous because you can have any version of decimal after that decimal point, or any version of digits, excuse me, after the decimal point, but it, again, it's reported discreetly. So I'm gonna put that here. It's another one that is reported discreetly. Okay. So there's plenty of numerical, continue, numerical continuous variables out there that we just, for whatever reason, report discreetly, probably because it's just, it saves us some time. All right, so with that, that's the end of page three. We're gonna turn over to page four.